God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight I have a word for you coming straight from the throne of the Almighty, from the presence of the living God. I have a word for you tonight. And this word, we will not be able to finish all of this tonight, but by the grace of God and by the enabling of the Spirit, I believe the glory is here. And this is a message straight out of the glory. And it is called the Battle of the Fathers, releasing the glory of the sons. The Battle of the Fathers, releasing the glory of the sons. The Battle of the Fathers, release the glory of the sons. Glory be to God. You want to hear this word that I have to release to you tonight because it is going to touch your spirit. It is going to touch your soul. And even as I'm releasing this word, I'm telling you that there are some deliverances that are going to happen. There are some breakthroughs that are going to take place. There are some things that are going to happen in the realm of the spirit. And I want you to keep glued to hear what the Lord has to say to his children tonight, because this is very important for this season and for this time and to enter into the next realm of what God wants us to enter into. And by the grace of God, I am decreeing tonight that your glory has come. The glory glory of the Lord has come. The glory of the Lord has come. I'm taking this from the book of Genesis chapter 31 and verse 1 to verse 18. Genesis chapter 31 from verse 1 to verse 18. But tonight I will only go up to verse 7 or verse 8 because of what the Lord has been revealing and because of what the Lord has been saying. Glory be to God. Let me read from verse 1 to verse 8 for you. And he heard the words of Laban's sons. Genesis 31 verse 1 to 8. And he heard the words of Laban's sons saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance. This is Genesis chapter 31. I see I see your father's countenance that it is not toward me as before but the God of my father hath been with me verse 6 and you know that with all my power I have served your father and your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times but God suffered him not to hurt me verse 8 if he said thus the speckled shall be thy wages then all the cattle beard speckled and if he he said thus thus ring straight shall be thy hire then bear all the cattle ring straight thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and hath given them to me let me stop right there at verse number nine hallelujah but I'm not going to go to verse number nine tonight I'm going all the way up to verse number eight and by the grace of God we will pick this up tomorrow night by the spirit of the Lord I pray father that your grace will enable this word and that your glory will ignite this word and that your spirit Lord will ignite this word as it goes forth in the mighty name of Jesus. The battle of the fathers release the glory of the sons. The battle of the fathers release the glory of the sons. Now let me define some terms for you so that I can pull you from one place to where I want you to get to. The word father and, uh, uh, and glory are two words that I'll be zooming in on in this message that has come from the Spirit of the Lord. Father means founder. It means source. It means chief. It means leader. It means one who brings into existence. And so uh, 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 it is reflected to us. It, it, it is uh, uh, when you talk about one who brings into existence, you're talking about one who, who becomes the the father of something so you're talking about probably the father of science or the father of a spiritual movement or the father of this or the father of that he's the one who brings into existence something that did not exist before the father is the one who establishes identity I want you to keep that that is very critical the father is the one who do what establishes identity fatherhood is revealed is is is, is revealed to 
manifest the glory of God. So when we talk about fatherhood, we are talking about the glory of God must be manifested on the one whom the, 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 the fatherhood is, 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 is given to. Hallelujah. He is the glory of the children. That's in Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 6. You need to hear this this passage and what it has to say proverbs chapter 17 the book of proverbs hallelujah chapter 17 and verse 6 and it says something it says listen children's children are the crown of old men and the glory of the children are their fathers uh, that is very critical the glory of the children are their fathers now when we talk about glory we are talking about a word by the name of kabod this literally means to be heavy to be plenteous or numerous to be rich to be honored or to be honorable to have splendor or to be glorious to have abundance to have riches to have dignity to have reputation and it also means reverence so there's these are the two words that i want to bring to your attention father and glory because the release of the glory is connected to the father hear me hear me very well the release of the glory is connected to the father there is a problem that we have been having in the church it is that the devil has been assassinating fathers and the enemy has been raising up pseudo fathers in the kingdom in the church and that is why the glory has been hampered the glory has been tampered with the glory has been delayed from coming because fathers have not been raised up and you're going to see what I'm saying to you because the release of the glory of sons is tantamount and paramount to the release of the fathers and so there is a battle that is taking place where the fathers, the true fathers must arise to battle for the glory of the sons, hallelujah and our true father is rising up now, our true father is being aroused from his throne because there is a battle for the sons to be revealed and God is about to do battle and is ready to do battle and is doing battle with pseudo fathers, anti fathers who have been positioning themselves in the church. God is uprooting them, God is removing them, God is pulling them down, and the shift is taking place so that the real fathers, the one who carry the true spirit of fatherhood, can arise because the glory is about to be revealed. Hallelujah. Follow me very carefully. Glory is the weight of God. He wants to put his weight upon us. Glory is everything that God is manifesting in tangible form. The desire of our father is to put everything that he is upon us so that we and our children can be the crown that he wears. Hallelujah. Hear me, hear me very well. The desire of our father is to put everything that he is upon us so that we and our children are the crown that he wears. Come on. Men look kindly on us because of our father. If our father does not have a good name then honor is usually taken away from the sons come on follow me very carefully i'm taking you somewhere if your father does not have a good name honor is taken away from the sons and so what has been happening in the in the body is that many of our fathers <laughs> My God, this is a hot message tonight. Serious one. Many of our fathers have no honor. Many of our fathers have no glory. And the sons they are producing have no honor. Hear me? Let me say it again. Many of the fathers have no glory. And the sons they are producing have no honor. And so we have a problem that has been happening in the body. Where people have been asking, where is the glory of God? Because the glory of God is seen in the honor of the sons. 
What is going on is that many fathers who call themselves fathers are not connected to the spirit of father. Let me say it again. Many fathers who call themselves fathers are not connected to the spirit of father or to father the spirit i'm talking about our father in heaven and so what is happening is that they are calling themselves fathers demanding that people call them fathers but they do not carry the spirit of fatherhood and so they cannot produce any glory and they cannot produce sons that have any honor hallelujah i'm going somewhere you see, promotion comes to the son because of who the father or who his father is and what the father has done. Promotion and honor will come to the son. And when I talk about son, I'm talking about sons and daughters. So don't women, don't get yourself out of the mix. I'm talking, I'm using a spiritual terminology here. Promotion comes to sons and daughters because of who the father is and what the father has done the legacy of your father will bring you promotion what is happening is that many of our fathers do not have any connection to our father in heaven therefore there is no legacy flowing through their spiritual fatherhood that they are exhibiting in the church thus their sons and their daughters have no honor because the spirit of the lord does not seal them with the seal of honor there is no manifestation of honor when people talk about them, they are not talking about them with any pride, with any dignity, with any reverence. Because their honor is not there. There is no legacy. I'm not talking about buildings that you build or programs that you put on or events that you hold. I'm talking about a spirit of honor, a connection to the Father that causes you to, be, to have the spirit of fatherhood so that the sons and the daughters can have honor. My God. When you talk about, when you mention the name of churches, I, I, listen, I'm a prophet. I can speak the way I'm speaking. When you mention the names of some churches, people will push up their nose. People will skin up their faces. People will not even want to associate with you because what? Because of the father, the representation that is in that church. There is no dignity. There is no reverence. There is no honor. The word of that man out there on the street is disgusting. Thus it brings shame to the sons and the daughters on the, uh, uh, that, that is over. Come on. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost gave me this message and I'm preaching it. Because if we are going to talk about bringing the glory, we have to correct what is going on in fatherhood. The legacy of fathers is the glory of the sons. The legacy of fathers is the glory of the sons. Our father, Jesus taught us, he said, when you pray, say, he said, our father, immediately he connects you to a legacy. Immediately he connects you to a spiritual legacy, an eternal legacy that cannot be denied that cannot be put down that is verifiable undeniable irrefutable legacy that stands on its own so when we come to pray and say our father instantly we are connecting to a legacy our father has a legacy and we are connected to that legacy and so to miss the glory is to miss the legacy of our father let me say it again to miss the glory is to miss the legacy of our father because his legacy is in his glory come on i wish somebody would grab what i'm saying to you tonight i wish you would get what i'm saying to you tonight in the book of malachi chapter 4 and verse 6 it says and he shall turn this is god now 
he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse you see what has been going on is that the heart of fathers have been turned away from the children and the heart of the children have been turned away from the fathers why has the devil done this why is it that the enemy has been fighting against fatherhood so much it is because once fatherhood is in its right place the glory shall be revealed once fatherhood is in its right position the glory of the lord will be revealed there is let, let me tell you once a man is in right alignment with god there shall be manifestations of the glory and if a man is in right alignment with god then his heart will be in right alignment with his children you see, there is power in fatherhood. Accessing the glory requires a turning of the heart of the sons and daughters. What has been happening in our church and our churches is that the hearts of the sons and daughters have not yet turned. We are praying for the nation to turn, but our hearts have not yet turned. We are praying for the nation to be revived, but our hearts have not yet been revived. You see, there has to be a turning of the hearts of the sons and the daughters back to the father. If there is not a turning of the hearts, there will be no release of the glory. Yes, we will have trickles of the anointing. Well, let me tell you, the glory is what brings the revival, not the anointing. The glory brings the revival and everything you need is in the glory. The glory does what the anointing is limited to do. Many of us, we are anointed, but we have not yet broken through the glory realm. When the glory comes things will begin to happen that we have not even thought of the manifestations of god will begin to take place that we did not even dream of you see the glory accessing the glory requires the turning of the hearts of the sons and daughters back to the father fatherhood is a big problem in the church let's not deny it it is right before us. It is stink. It is dirty. Fatherhood is a big problem in the church because there are many men who have risen up, but they are not fathers. There are many men who are bishops and apostles and pastors and prophets, but they are not fathers. There is a cry in the sons and daughters for true fathers. Sons and daughters must turn back to the father. But before they can turn back to the father, the father must be in place. You see, what is happening is that our father who art in heaven has not been put in place in the church. There are too many men who have taken place, the place of our father in heaven. They are like gods in the house of God. And so God is uprooting them. God is removing them. God is pulling them down. God is bringing them to shame. For the cry of the hearts of the sons and the daughters have gone up to God. And God is saying enough is enough. In this dispensation, the glory must be revealed. The glory must be released. My glory must fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. But I have to fix the issue of fatherhood. And he's pulling down pseudo fathers out of the house. We know that true fathers are lacking in the body. Let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you. Let me show you something. A true father would never seek to have sexual intercourse with his daughter. A true father would never seek to violate the purity of his child. And a lot of that has been going on in the body. A lot of that has been happening. 
We are men who call themselves fathers and draw unto themselves daughters. Only draw daughters so that they can fill their harem. Enough is enough. May the judgment of the Lord go forth and expose this wickedness. For there are many daughters who are crying, who are afraid to talk because of the shame that they feel, because of pastors who call themselves fathers, because of prophets who call themselves fathers, because of apostles who call themselves fathers, but they are not fathers, who have abused them, who have used them, who have raped them, who have despised them. And yet they come and lift up holy hands and say, oh, I am a father and I have many children. You're not a father. You're the devil from hell. May the Lord expose. I know what I'm talking about. I said, I know what I'm talking about. It's not that I'm asking. I know what I'm talking about. And the spirit of the Lord is grieved. Because the, the problem is that the head is dirty. How do you expect the bottom to be dirty, to, to be clean? Listen. God is ready to fix fatherhood and I'm prophesying this that the spirit of the Lord is going to go through his house and those who are not his who have called themselves what they are not who are bearing a name but carry not the spirit the Lord shall uproot them remove them and throw them out Come on, we, the prophets have to arise and call a spade what a spade is don't let us pretty up this thing and sugarcoat this thing and, and and, and, and put icing on this thing and say, oh, they have a weakness. No, they don't have a weakness. They just don't carry the spirit that they say they carry. If you carry the spirit that you say you carry, then there are certain things that you cannot do. But if you are a fake, if you are an imposter, then you're going to come up with this nonsense. That you say is weakness. The glory has been locked. Because we are aligned to wrong fathers. I'm making some potent statements here. The glory has been locked in your life. Locked from being released over your life. Because you have been aligned to wrong fathers. You see, tonight is realignment night. Tonight is shifting night. Because you've been asking for the glory and you've been asking the Lord, pour out your glory upon my life. Take me into the realm of glory. Take me into your presence. Cause me to see your glory. Cause me to see your face. But you cannot reach in the manifestation of the glory except you are aligned and realigned to where you need to be come on somebody i want you to type alignment type alignment there has to be an alignment and a realignment the glory has been locked because many have been aligned to the wrong fathers i'm going somewhere i'm going somewhere because this is, this is potent. This is hot, I'm telling you. This is serious. I'm taking you back to Genesis chapter 31. Because you see, you have to catch the revelation of the glory. The first place glory is mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis 31. The first place it is mentioned is in Genesis 31. So you, 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 have, to, you have to understand why is it that glory is mentioned in this place and what is god trying to say to us and what is it that he wants us to understand in the book of genesis 31 verse 1 the bible says that he heard the words of laban's sons jacob heard the words of laban's sons and his sons laban's sons were saying jacob hath taken away all that was our fathers and of that which our fathers had gotten uh, 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 and of that which our fathers hath he gotten all his glory listen I've learned something about the Bible it does not use words willy nilly the words that are used in the Bible are purposeful the first place glory appears in the Bible is in Genesis 31 verse 1 it is in reference to an accusation an accusation of association. 
I call it the accusation of association. A father's son or the sons of a particular father were, uh, were, were accusing another son. A son of a different lineage. A son of a different spirit. A son of a different grace. A son of a different covenant. A son of a different altar. That he stole what belonged to their father. The sons rose up to accuse another son. You see what has been happening in the body. Oh Lord help me tonight. Is that there are some sons that have risen up to accuse other sons. There are some daughters that have risen up to accuse other daughters. They accused Jacob that what he was displaying was because of Laban, their father, and not his father. Come on, follow me. They were accusing Jacob that what was happening in his life was because of Laban, their father, and not because of Jacob's father. Come on. And so what was going on is that the sons of Laban despised, disdained, rejected, hated, and were very jealous of what was happening to Jacob. You see, the fact that you are experiencing what you are experiencing right now in this glory realm, there are people who will be jealous of you and who are going to accuse you. People who are going to say all manner of things against you and will pronounce some things over you and against your life and to say some things concerning the glory that is being revealed upon you. And they're going to say some things that, oh, you're associating with that man and you're associating with that woman. Don't you know this and don't you know that and don't you know that? Then the question is, if you're accusing him so much, then where did the glory on his life come from? Come on, work with me, work with me, work with me. It was not Jacob they rejected. It was not Jacob they were accusing. It was not Jacob they were despising. It was God, Jacob's real father. You see, remember what they said. They said, it is because of our father that you got your glory. And so what was going on is that the accusation was saying that Jacob's father was nothing. I said, thunder fire. My father is everything. I said, thunder fire. My father is the God of glory. I said, thunder fire. My father is the one who has the cattle upon a thousand hills. How dare you accuse my father? You see, any accusation against you is an accusation against your father. Hey. They were accusing Jacob that, look, uh, Jacob's father was nothing. He had no legacy. They were saying that Jacob's father had no legacy. Jacob's father had no weight. Jacob's father had no splendor. They accused the glory of Jacob's father. You see, there are some people who think that because they have everything going for them, that they have a right to despise you. They have a right to reject you. They have a right to say all manner of wickedness and evil against you. And do all manner of things that is un un unfathomable against you, against your life. But let me tell you something. It is not you that they are doing it against. It is your father in heaven. Because you are where you are because your father is taking you somewhere. You are where you are because your father is processing you. You are where you are because your father is doing something in you. Mighty God of Daniel. He who accuses me, accuses my father because i carry the spirit of the father inside of me the fact that they were accusing jacob and the glory on jacob's life it initiated a glory battle come on somebody type glory battle type glory battle type glory battle 
It initiated a glory battle. There is a glory battle going on right now. You see, there is a glory battle that is going on right now. It wasn't about Jacob. Come on, take your eyes off of Jacob. This was not about Jacob. And I'm going to prove this to you by the Spirit of the Lord. This is not about Jacob. This is about Jacob's father. You have to understand, Jacob ran away from his home. No son is supposed to run away from their father's house. When a son is leaving his father's house, he's supposed to be released by the father. So no son is supposed to run away. No son is supposed to be kicked out. No son is supposed to be denied the presence of their father. Because when that happens, there are problems that are going to take place in the life of that son. Come on. Issues are going to happen. And what is happening, what may happen to some of these sons is that they may get aligned to wrong fathers. Like Jacob was aligned to Laban, wrong father. What may happen is that they may be pushed out of their inheritance, like Jephthah. And instead of accessing your inheritance, you have to, you have to work hard and three times as hard as others work. Because there is no release that came to you. You see, it is wrong for fathers to kick out their sons. Mm -mm. Release your sons right. Release them properly. Release them with a blessing. It is wrong for mothers to kick out their daughters. I'm going to deal with mothers. Come on, I'm going to deal with that spirit. Just hold on. But I'm dealing with the fatherhood spirit because something is wrong. And if the glory is going to come back, listen, we have to fix what is going on in the realm of fatherhood. Whose glory was in question here? It was Laban. Let's look at Laban. Because you see, they were accusing Jacob of stealing Laban's glory. In other words, they wanted Jacob to work for Laban for nothing. That's what happens when you're connected to the wrong father. You work for nothing. That's when you're aligned to the wrong person. You work for nothing. That's what happens when your alignment is incorrect. You will labor, profitless labor, useless hard work. Nothing will happen and amount in your life. And if anything begins to happen, they will begin to accuse you. Because from the very beginning, you were like Cinderella. Nothing was supposed to come to you. Nothing good was supposed to happen to you. Nothing mighty was supposed to take place in your life. You were always supposed to be down there and they be up there. You were, also, you were always supposed to be their doormat and they walk on you. Why? Because you are aligned to the wrong father. Many of you, you are in some churches and you are aligned to the wrong fathers. That is why nothing is happening in your life. I'm dealing with this tonight because, listen, the Spirit of the Lord has deposited this in me. What does Laban mean? Because we have to understand what, what glories are at war here. Laban means white. It comes from a word that means to make bricks. The bricks are white in color. So it, it comes from the whiteness of the clay. So a brick from the whiteness of the clay. And it also represents an altar of bricks. Laban symbolizes a man who knew how to make altars. Mm. Yes. He's a man who knew how to make altars. And a man who knew how to make idols. We saw how Rachel stole his idols. Yes. And because of that, Laban hunted down Jacob to kill him. Follow me. He was a man who understood how to access a particular realm of glory. Notice I did not say God's glory. 
I said a particular realm of glory, but not the true glory. He represented glory that came from the, a combination of the works of the flesh and a merger with the demonic. Listen, there are some men out there, the glory that they are exhibiting is not true glory. It is glory from the demonic realm. You know this because they can't father anybody. Aye. The spirit of fatherhood is not in them, yet they are carrying glory. If glory is on you any at all, then the spirit of glory which produces the spirit of fatherhood will also be in your life. And if that is happening, then you will produce sons. Demonic glory requires payment. And hey, my God, help me tonight, Holy Ghost, because I'm going to mash up some stuff going on out there. You have to be free from the prisons. Demonic glory requires payment. And these pseudo fathers, these anti divine fathers, in order for you to become their sons or their daughters, you have to pay. You have to pay money. You have to sow seed. You have to give all your substance. And sometimes you have to give your body. The sons of demonic glory were accusing Jacob <laughs> that his father was nothing. Again, I say thunder fire. My father is everything. They were accusing Jacob that he was literally nothing and that what he acquired was because of their father Laban and not his. Says who? Says who? Let me straighten my shirt and square up my shoulders. Says who? What I have acquired in my life is because of who? Come on, I want you to type that in the chat. Says who? Says who? What I have acquired in my life is because of who? Who do you say enabled me to acquire this? Come on, come on, come on. I, I don't know if I'm touching you yet. I don't know if I'm touching your spirit yet. I don't know if I'm awakening you yet. They were literally saying to Jacob that what he acquired was not because of the father of, of Isaac and the father of Abraham. It was not because of God the father, El Shaddai, Yahweh, that revealed himself in fire, in covenant, and walked through the, 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 the sacrifice that Abraham laid on the altar. Says who? What you're saying in my life? That what I have acquired is because of who? Come on, you need to ask some people. You need to tell some people, say what? What did you just say? That what I have on my life is because of who? You? Come on, where were they when you were laboring in fasting? Where were they when God was processing you? Where were they when God was dealing with you in the bush? Where were they when God rescued you, preserved your life, kept you? Oh my God. Says who? Says who? Says Listen to me. Because you see, some men have taken the glory. Some men have taken the glory. And they see some things on your life. They see some manifestations of the grace on your life. They see some demonstrations of the power on your life. And they want to say that what is on your life is because of them. Because they don't want God to get the glory. I say from tonight, dare any man to say to me that what is on my life is because of them. I say, say who? My tongue is already on fire. Jesus, help me tonight. Where were they, woman of God, when you were in the backside of the desert? Where were they when God was giving you some backsiding to conform to his spirit and to his word? Where were they when God was opening you up, cutting you open, removing and planting, imparting my God Almighty? Where were they, mighty God of Daniel? Where were they when you were down in the gutter, down in the valley, buried in the cave, locked in darkness, when the spirit of the Lord and the angel of glory came down and Hey, my God, where were they? Says who? You see, you got to understand this is a battle of the glory. My God of my, uh, my God, my God, my God. 
Hallelujah. Tonight may God separate us from wrong fathers and wrong glory alignment. Because you see, what happens is that when we are aligned to wrong fathers and aligned to wrong glories and wrong glory alignments, they begin to exert themselves and exalt themselves in your life and want to say that it is because of them why you are because we, why, why you are who you are. Tonight that lie is coming to an end. Whosoever is saying that in your life tonight night it comes to an end in the name of jesus i say tonight prophetically time for a shift time for a shift time for a glory realignment time for an alignment to the right father i said it is time for a shift hallelujah jesus our Father in heaven, show your glory in our lives. That's one of my prayers for us tonight. Our Father in heaven, show forth your glory in our lives. Let your glory be shown and be seen in our life. Because some men are too, they are too pompous, they are too proud, they are too arrogant. They are too enough now. Enough is enough. Many of them, they are, they are, they are too much. They are, they, are, they are taking God's glory. Enough is enough. Our Father in heaven, show forth your glory in our life. Listen, I am because God is. I said I am because God is. I am not because of another man. I am not because of another woman. I am because of God. You see, too many people are taking the place of God in your life. They think because they have helped you to get from one step to the next step or from one place to the next place that it, 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 it qualifies them to take the glory in your life. This is why some people, listen, this is why some people will never come to help you. This is why God is holding back some people from giving a helping hand in your life. Because at the end of the day, nobody must say that they are the ones who made you who you are. Separation is happening, is coming, and is taking place. Shift! Hallelujah. In verse number 2 of Genesis 31, Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. You see, once the glory of God comes upon you. Mm, hey, Jesus, strengthen me, Lord. Once the glory of God comes upon you, there is a shift. Glory will shift the countenance of people towards you. Let me say it again. Glory will shift the countenance of people towards you. When glory comes on your life, the countenance of people towards you will change, especially those who have been holding you down, caging you, locking you, imprisoning you, manipulating you, despising you, rejecting you, disdaining you. Their countenance will change. Once glory comes on your life, once glory comes on your life, Accusation will begin. You don't accuse the sons of glory and expect the father of glory to keep quiet. You don't accuse the sons of glory and expect the father of glory to keep quiet because the glory on my life is because of my father in heaven. Jesus said, oh my God. You see, you better catch the words that Jesus say. <laughs> it is time we stop listening to what men have to say and their opinions of what they have to say. Jesus said, the glory that I have with you, now give it to them. 
I am a glory carrier. I was born again into glory. I was born for glory. I am on the road to glory. I carry glory. I am glory, glory. I am a glory carrier because glory is in me. Jesus prayed for me to be in glory. Jesus prayed for me to be a glory carrier. He prophesied glory on my life. And in fact, he transferred it before I even came to the kingdom. Glory is on me. Whether you like it or not. I am a glory carrier. And the glory of God is on my life. You don't accuse sons of glory and expect the father of glory to keep quiet. They were accusing Jacob that his father had no glory. My God, God began something when they opened their mouth. It was at this point that God stepped into the matter of Jacob. I pray tonight that because you are under the glory cloud, because you are under the glory atmosphere, because you have been experiencing the glory over the past two days, that the God of glory, the father of glory will step into your matter. It was, hey, my God, it was better Laban and his sons kept quiet. It, it, it was better they kept quiet. They should not have had uh, accused the glory of, 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 of Jacob's father. It is better they had kept quiet. You see, there, there are some sons out there because they are experiencing some things. They are acquiring some things. They are working in some things. They are, they are, they are, some things are attaching to their life. And they look at you because your life is not moving as their life. You are not acquiring some things that they are acquiring. That they think that they have the right now to accuse you of some things. Big mistake. Big mistake. You should never have said that Prophet Bernard don't have a church. You should, you should never have said that he is not. Thing. You should never have said that, oh, who is that man that he's talking about? He's a prophet. No, that, that was a big mistake. You should not have said that. You just activated something in my life that you are going to be sorry that you activated it. Listen, there are some people that have activated some things in your life because of their accusation of your father. They thought they were accusing you. They thought they were belittling you. They thought they were doing you injustice. But listen, they just did you a favor because they roused up the lion of judah the god of glory the father of glory copiousness and magnificence to come now and intervene in your matter and do battle my god are you catching what i'm saying to you tonight are you catching what i'm saying to you laban shifted from Jacob because God was judging the glory of Laban when people begin to shift from you keep quiet I said when people begin to shift from you keep quiet because there is a glory battle that is taking place many of you are going to realize that some people are going to shift from you because your alignment is changing your alignment is changing and you realize that some people begin to pull away they begin to shift their face towards you is not like before why because you have shifted from under their glory you have shifted from under their glory when men try to define you by their glory, God will judge them. I said, when men try to define you by their glory, God will judge them. You will hear them say some things like, oh, you can't be anything without me. You can't get anywhere without my blessing." If I don't release you, you can't go anywhere. You can't re Hey, listen, the devil is a liar. That's when God will step in. That's when God will enter into the matter. That's when, hey, listen to me, listen to me. Mighty God of Daniel. They think that they are the be all and end all of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Mm-hmm. 
You see, when men try to define you by their glory, God will judge them. Because my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praises to graven images. Hey, Jesus, help me. I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. You see, there are some pastors, their faces have shifted concerning you. Don't worry yourself. Keep quiet. You see, there are, there are some quote-unquote men of God. Quote-unquote women of God. Who think that, hey, look, because you attend their church. Their, their church. Yeah, I'm saying it right. Their church. Because you attend their church. And because their church is not the kingdom of God. It is not the house of the Lord. It is their glory that is ruling in that place. And when you now begin to come in contact with your father in heaven. Their countenance towards you begin to change. And you realize that they don't talk to you as they used to before. They don't, the, the way they address you is now with some animosity. And you're wondering to yourself, hey, what is going on here? I didn't offend my pastor. I didn't do anything to offend the prophet. What is going on here? Their, 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 their countenance towards me is not the same. Listen, there is a shift. God is doing a battle. There is a shift. John 17, 22, we are glory carriers. Jesus prayed for us to be glory carriers. So when you come in alignment with true glory, that which is not glory will shift from your life. And one of the ways you will know it is that the faces and the countenances of people towards you will change. Hallelujah. Verse number three, I tell you, we are climbing. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, hey, Jesus, listen, you, you see what happened in verse one and verse two? Accusation, countenance changed. Bam, the Lord said. Bam, the Lord entered. The Lord said unto Jacob, return. Listen, watch what the Lord is saying. Return unto the land of thy fathers. Who, which fathers? The land of Isaac and Abraham. Return unto the land of your fathers. And unto your kindred. That is your brothers. Your family. Those who are connected to your father. And I will be with you. I will be with you. Come on somebody. Type that in the chat. I will be with you. I will be with you. I will be with you. Hallelujah. I will be with you. Now watch this. Once there is a glory shift. God will begin to speak. God initiated the glory shift. Because they were accusing Jacob of stealing glory. But once the battle begins, God will begin to speak and he will initiate the glory shift. The Lord said to Jacob, there is no shift to the true glory without a prophetic voice releasing it. Hear me very well. There is no shift to the true glory to come into your life without the prophetic voice releasing it. Let me, let me take you into the prophetic of, of what is going on in Genesis chapter 31 and verse 3. The Lord said, let's zoom in on that word said. The word said is the, is the Hebrew word amar. It means to say. Or... To speak. It means to appoint. To declare. To publish. To command. To call. To certify. And to boast oneself. What is going on here? Because why, why, why did I zoom in on this word? Because, listen, God is now publishing 
that your glory has shifted. It wasn't that God was just saying to Jacob. He was also prophesying that the glory of Laban in his life has ended. May the glory of Laban end tonight. Every man or woman that is imprisoning your destiny by their demonic glory, may it end now. When God spoke, God certified Jacob in the glory realm. Ah, mighty God of Daniel. I said, when God spoke, he certified Jacob to be a glory carrier. You have been accusing me that I have nothing. You have been accusing me that I have no anointing. You have been accusing me that I have no father. But the Lord spoke and certified Jacob that he was in the realm of glory. A glory that was higher than the glory of Laban and the glory of the sons of Laban. Hear me tonight. Under this prophetic unction under this prophetic voice under this glory realm the lord is certifying you that you are a glory carrier he's certifying that your realm has shifted he's certifying that you have moved he's certifying that the battle he has taken it over and there is a shift hallelujah the command that God gave to Jacob was to return. Remember what I read in the book of Malachi. That look, you have to return to the father and the father has to return to the son in order for the glory to be released. That is why there has to be a realignment. Hallelujah. Return to the land of your father. And I will be with you, Jacob. The promise of God to Jacob is a promise of glory being with him. When God is with you, glory is with you. I said when God is with you, glory is with you. Come on, I want you to pray. Lord, be with me. Lord, be with me. Lord, be with me. Father of glory, be with me. My God, you are praying the scriptures. He says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. God is saying, glory shall never leave your life. Tonight, I break shame from your life. I break disgrace. I break every poverty. Everything that brings disgrace in your life is broken because the Lord says that he will be with you. Shame and darkness is broken from tonight. The Lord said, return to the land of your fathers. You see, God does not speak without making provision. I want you to understand this. When God speaks, he makes provision with his words. His word is his provision. So God is about to pave a way. He paved a way for Jacob that caused Laban Watch this. He paved a way for Jacob that brought about a breaking of the curse of Laban from his life. Laban's glory locked Jacob. Laban's glory was locking down Jacob because he was aligned to the wrong father. Oh God, help me tonight. But when God spoke, Jacob's glory was unlocked. Jesus. Who was it that locked your way? Who was it that locked your pathway to riches? Your pathway to honor. Your pathway to abundance. Who was it that locked your pathway to plenty? Who was it that locked your pathway to glory? 
by reason of what you are hearing tonight the way is opening up your path is opening up because the Lord is speaking over you as he spoke over Jacob hallelujah the glory is unlocking some things in you tonight who locked you come on i want you to type that in the chat who locked me who locked me who who locked me who was it that locked me who is the cause of my being locked up who is responsible for locking down my finances for locking down your finances for locking down your marriage for locking down your ministry for locking down your 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 children from coming out of your womb who locked your business who is it that locked your education who is it that locked your honor who locked me kata rakasaprakataza i release the key of the glory right now and i command that whosoever locked you tonight i decree they are broken and the lock is open whatever lock has been locked in your life i command the lock to open in the mighty name of jesus christ the son of the living god i say your finances unlocked your ministry unlocked your marriage unlocked your children unlocked your education unlocked your business unlocked your reputation unlocked your dignity unlocked mighty god of daniel i said every Everything about you unlocked in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, I'm telling you, this came from the fire of the Holy Ghost. Help me, Lord. God is opening a way by the glory. You see, when the glory comes, the way is opening up. And no man, no devil, no demon, no power of hell can block your way. I am prophesying to you tonight. I am decreeing to you tonight. I am saying to you tonight that there will be and cannot be any power that will block you from tonight. I said from tonight, whether it be Esau, whether it be Caesar, or whether it be no saw. I said no one can block your way from tonight. Whether it be principality, whether it be power whether it be rulers of darkness whether it be spirits of wickedness in high places whether it be whether it be witches whether it be wizards i am telling you esau caesar he saw or she saw i am saying to you that there shall not be any power that can block your way as of tonight for the glory has unlocked you and has unlocked your way in jesus name hallelujah hallelujah Many of God's sons and his daughters have been locked by glories that are not glory but curses. True glory makes a way for you. Hear me very well. You can quote me on this. True glory makes a way for you. It does not imprison you. It does not cage you. It does not put you in a box. Have you ever seen a king hide his son? Every true king showcases his son so that the kingdom can see the next ruler. But what we are having now is that for a long time, the pseudo fathers, let me call them pseudo fathers, because they are not true fathers, they are not true glory carriers. The anti divine fathers have been imprisoning the glory carriers they have been imprisoning the sons they have not been showcasing them they have not been announcing them they have not been unlocking them but they have been caging them mighty god of daniel and so we have come to a point now where the realm requires and demands a shift but the fathers have not announced the sons and so the sons are in a limbo because the fathers did not announce them there is no transition there is no 
Makata Braka Sebrokotaragada. Antichrist fathers in the pulpit. May the God of heaven. The true glory carrier uproot them, remove them, expose them, Makatarama. Beat them out of the temple with the belt of truth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The time has come for the glory to be released. The sons must be announced. The daughters must be announced. The glory carriers must be revealed. The earth is waiting on them by the grace of the living God. Nothing shall stop it in Jesus' name. Instead of being fathers, they are pharaohs. I don't know if you're feeling what I'm feeling in my spirit tonight. May every prison I'm speaking in your life, may every prison holding you captive shake, burst, break, and crumble by the glory of the living God. Tonight I shatter by the glory every prison holding you captive. Whatever prison these anti-divine fathers have put you in, whatever prison these demonic glories are holding you in, tonight I command a shaking in the realm of the spirit. Tonight I command a bursting forth in the realm of the spirit. Tonight I command a meltdown in the realm of the spirit. Tonight I decree in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that every prison that is holding you captive, prison of Laban, prison of Pharaoh, prison of Jezebel, break by fire, break by the glory of the living God. I command you released. Yes, those of you hearing my voice, I command you release from every prison that has been holding you captive in the mighty name of Jesus. Shake, break, fire, crumble in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, my God, I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the presence of the Lord. That's just verse 3. We are moving on. <laughs> Mighty God of Daniel. Mighty God of Daniel. That's just verse 3. I'm delivering this word to you tonight. You need to hear this. Jesus. In verse number 4. In verse number 4. The Bible says, And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah. To the field unto his flock. Hey, you realize what it says? It says, Unto whose flock? Unto Jacob's flock. He sent and called for Rachel and for Leah. Some of you are getting it in your spirit already. He sent. You see, when the glory is released and the glory is unlocked, true fathers will not hold it to themselves. They will send and call. They will send and call for Rachel. They will send and call for Leah. They, oh my God, they will send and call for the flock. Because you see, the glory is not for one man. The glory is for the congregation. The glory multiplies. Jacob sent and called for Rachel and for Leah. He called for the loved and the unloved. He called for the accepted and the rejected. He called for the one who was honored and for the one who was dishonored. Hey, my God. Both sets of sons were being called through the wives. Women, 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 hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. There is no manifestation of the glory upon the sons without you. Rachel and Leah represents the sons who are accepted and rejected the sons who are honored and dishonored come on Rachel and Leah represents in type both Israel and the Gentiles the love and the unloved come on you see God is calling us into the glory from the time of Jacob 
The Gentile church has been called to the glory. Hey, Jesus. From the time of Jacob, I said the Gentile church has been called to the glory. And so I have been appointed to be a glory carrier from the days of the initiation of the covenant of glory. A call to the glory is a call to separation. God doesn't call you to the glory without calling you to be separated from something and from someone and from some place and from some people and from some people. Sometimes the greatest hindrance to the experience of the glory is your spouse. I have to go there because some of you have to be delivered. The greatest hindrance to the experience of your glory sometimes is your spouse. If your spouse is not ready, it is dangerous on many levels. This is because God's call to the glory is not just a call on one man, but it's a call on the family. Because when God is realigning the father, he is making realignment of the family. And a man is not a father if he is not a husband. I said a man is not a father until he is a husband. Hey, Jesus, uh, some of you are going to be angry with me. Some of you are going to be upset with me. But I have to say, true spirit of fatherhood rests on those who are husbands. So if you're not willing to be a husband, but you want to drop seed out there, you're only a seed donor. You're not a father. Because you see, a father is a man who takes up responsibility for a wife, who then takes up responsibility for a family. You can't say you're a father if you have no responsibility for a wife. You see, there has to be realignment. The word of God has to be preached. Because God doesn't call a man to be a father without making the man a husband. Anything other than that is anti-divine. And so it is dangerous on many levels when your spouse doesn't want to come with you to the glory, to the call of the glory. It is dangerous on many levels because if Rachel did not come, if Leah did not come to Jacob when he called, Jacob would have left them. You see, when God is shifting you to the glory, your spouse must be shifted with you. It is not just you. It is your entire family that must be shifted. God's call to the glory does not wait on you to please yourself. When Jacob called for Rachel and Leah, they came immediately. There is a call on the spirit from the spirit into families right now to come to the glory. You don't please yourself when God is calling your spouse to the glory. Either you come or you stay under the curse because your call to the glory is a call to breakthrough. It's a call to blessing. It's a call to riches, abundance, honor. It's a call out of the curse. Some of us, our families are under some curses. And God is shifting us. This is why you are connecting to me. You are connecting to this glory realm. He, my God, it's not, it's not me. Let, let's, let's people begin to say, oh, he's preaching about himself. No, it's not me. It's about the glory that is being revealed by the Father who is in heaven. God is calling you, connecting you to the glory because he wants to shift your family. He wants to give your family a new name. A new, a new reputation, a new honor, a new face of dignity. Come on, I want you to type in the chat. Family, shift. Come on, type it. My family, shift. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In this season, 
women are important to the glory shift. Jacob was already with his flock. But he had to call his wives. This is a, there is a call to women, to wives, to daughters, to come from under Laban. Many women are stuck. Jesus have mercy. You are stuck under men who will not marry you. You are stuck in relationships that are not going anywhere. You are stuck under some pastors and prophets who are shutting down your marriage because they want you for themselves. I'm going to talk. Because you see, there is a demonic spirit called Laban that is out there. And the daughters have been shut down and God wants to release his daughters. Every man that comes to you, your prophet says, no, it's not this one. No, it's not that one. No, it's not that one. Then who is going to be the one? Even when the man fits the profile, he's not the man. Why? Because, because he wants you for himself. The devil is a liar. Tonight, may the women be delivered. May you be delivered from under these Lebanic... Jesus, help me tonight. Some of you wives, you are locked also. Because you give more time to your man of God than your husband. You're so holy that nakedness in your own house is unholy. You need a shift. There is no shifting into the glory without women being shifted. Wives have to be shifted. Daughters have to be shifted. Some of you, you have, you have released your daughters to, to so-called men of God, to so-called spiritual fathers, and you don't know what these men are doing with your daughters. And your daughters are afraid to tell you because you will not believe them. May God expose tonight. I said, may God expose tonight. I said, may God expose tonight. You see, all of these problems have come because the fathers are not in place. God bless the true fathers that are out there who are truly carrying the spirit of fatherhood and raising up sons and daughters for Christ. God bless them. But there is a spirit that we have to deal with because God's glory must enter. You see, when we are talking about coming from under Laban and women coming from under Laban and men coming from under Laban, we're talking about your emotions coming from under Laban. The ways of the flesh coming from under Laban. Your ways of self-seeking. Your ways of materialism. Your, your identity to worldly fathers. Your ways of idolatry that wants you to remain bound to a system of idolatry rooted in religious practices. You have to come from under Laban. Some of you, you are not the, 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 the physical image of your father, but you are the splitting emotional image of your daddy. Wrong emotion, wrong attitude, wrong mindset. You have to come from under that. Dirty attitudes, dirty habits. You need deliverance from your Lebanic father. Women, you are important to the next move of the glory upon the church. The flock is ready. But you are, are you ready to align with your true husband? You see, Rachel and Leah, they were called to Laban in the field. Laban didn't meet them in the house because where Laban lived was connected to, where Jacob lived was connected to Laban's house. You see, there has to be a shift to your true husband. 
Are you ready to step to stop letting the curse be your definition? You are married, but you are still connected to your father. Hmm. You're still emotionally connected to your father's idols, your father's ways. You are married, but you're still bound. You are still connected to your father's abuse. You are still connected to your father's neglect. You are still connected to your father's absence. You are still connected to your father's pain. You are still connected to your father's insecurities. You are still connected to your father's idolatry. You are still connected to your father's gods. You are still connected to your father's foundation. You need deliverance. There is no connecting to the glory. There is no going up in the glory. If you are still connected to the, my God Almighty, to the Lebanic tendencies of your father's house. And there are some of us, too many of us, too many women, too many boys, too many girls, too many men who are still connected to the Lebanic spirit of their father. And there are too many Lebanic fathers in the church. Jesus help me tonight. And so because of this connection, it is difficult for you to transit into the glory. It is time for a shift. It is time for you to let go of your father. And connect to the real father. Hallelujah. So what are some of the things you're going to let go of, women? Because listen, I'm talking to you now. The next move of the glory is dependent on you. You've got to let go of men who are not your husbands. Men who cannot carry you to true glory. You have to let go off of them. You're going to have to let go off of pastors who have locked you in a religious system that curses you rather than bring glory to your life. You've got to let go of prisons of emotional pain that have restricted you from moving forward. You're going to let go of unforgiveness that ties you to a stall like a like a mournful donkey you gotta let go of selfishness that makes you do things to hurt others in the name of advancing yourself you gotta let go let go let go let go let hey, my god you gotta let it go man if we're gonna go into the glory it begins with you letting go some things and turning back your heart to the true father It is time to let go and join with the husband of your glory, Jesus Christ himself, your true husband. If you don't connect to Christ, how can you connect to your real husband? You will get prophecies that are not prophecies at all. If the man is not in Christ, he cannot carry you to the place of glory. Let me say it again. If the man is not in Christ, he cannot carry you to the place of true glory. That is why you are always looking out to fulfill your need to be glorious. Women, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Many of you are looking out. To fulfill gloriousness in your life. To look beautiful. To feel beautiful. Why? Because you are not yet connected to Christ. You're married but you're not connected to Jesus. So you feel a void inside of you. Men do not complete you. Let me say it. Because there is a statement that is out there. Oh this is my better half. I don't have any better half. I don't have any better half. I was made complete. I was born whole. And when I was born again, I was born again a whole man. When you were born again, you were born again a whole woman, a whole woman. You weren't half of you wasn't born again and quarter you wasn't born again. So you're not waiting on anybody to complete you. You are complete the way you are. Jesus is the one that completes you. And if you're not completing him, you can't complete anybody else. Mighty God of Daniel. In Christ, I am made whole. I'm not made whole in any woman. And no woman is made whole in any man. I don't complete anybody. I compliment. Hmm. 
Let me say it again. I don't complete anybody. Because I can't complete anybody. Jesus is the one that completes you. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When you are born again, you are born again into the glory. And then you are completed. It is only when the glory comes upon your life that you can truly complement. Help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, we are pushing. There's a word in my spirit. You have to hear this word. It is heart of the press. In verse number five, the Bible says, Jacob said to them, I see your father's countenance. That it is not toward me as before. But the God of my father has been with me. Hey, my God. Come on, somebody. I want you to type that God is with me. God is with me. I want you to type that God is with me. You see, Laban's countenance changed towards Jacob because the glory shifted. When true glory comes on you, the truth of people around you will be revealed. Stop trying to change the countenance of people towards you. Stop trying to change how people feel towards you. Seek the face of God so your face can begin to reflect His. True glory is when our face begins to reflect the face of God. The glory of God will change the face of men. So your prayer should be, Oh God, change my face by showing me your glory. Stop trying to change people's countenance towards you. You see, verse number six, we are, we, are, we are moving on. Verse number six says, And you know, with all my power, I have served your father. Now I'm going to dive into something right here. With all my power, I have served your father. Whose father are you serving? Your father or another man's father? Whose father are you serving? Because this is very important. If you're going to shift to the glory, and if the glory is going to come on your life, you, 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 gotta have to, you, you must serve the right father. The right father must be served by you. You see, Jacob was serving a glory that was not his legacy. Jacob served a glory that was not his legacy, not his definition. And he was serving that glory with all his power. You see, some of you are serving, but you are serving the wrong people. You are serving in the wrong place. And you are serving the wrong glory. Follow me. Because you have to be delivered tonight. The glory is going to come on your life. You have to be delivered. You see, Jacob said, with all my power. He used the word. It is koak. It means all his vigor, all his means, all his capacity, all his produce, all his fruits, all his force, all his strength, all his substance, all his wealth. Too many of you have been serving the wrong glory with your means, with your wealth, with your produce, with your fruits. Too many of you have been, hey, mighty God of Daniel, help me tonight. You have been planting fruits but getting no returns because you are serving the wrong glory. You have been using your vigor to serve the wrong man. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you are not getting any returns because your alignment has been wrong all this time. You are a giver by nature. You are hospitable by nature. You are generous by nature. And you do it. When you do it, you do it with all your power, with all your might, with all your strength. And you are serving. What is the wrong glory you are serving? You cannot sow in glory and not get honor. We're fixing some stuff tonight. 
You cannot, it is impossible for you to sow in glory and not reap honor. Honor is the fruit that comes when you sow in glory. So watch this. Honor is the fruit of glory seeds. So if you are sowing in a glory, without question you must reap honor. It may come with abundance, riches, wealth, dignity. Whatever it, the returns are, but the returns must be a glory return. If you sow into glory, you cannot get shame. Some of you have been asking, why have I been sowing and not getting any returns? Why have I been sowing and not seeing anything coming back to my life? Because the laws of the Spirit says, when you sow, you must reap. But if you are sowing and you're receiving shame, something is wrong with the glory that you are sowing into. I make no apologies for my statement. I said something is wrong with the soil that you are sowing into. Something Something is wrong. There is no way that you can sow into the glory and not get a return of honor. You cannot sow into false light, deceptive light, manipulative light, and expect your face to shine. Satan cannot produce light. His light is darkness. Help me tonight, Lord Jesus. Many of you have been reaping darkness. It is time for a shift. It is time that your power serve the right glory. It is time that you use your means to serve the right glory. Jesus, help me tonight. It is time that your power shift to serve the right glory. It is time that your labor goes to the right place. Your labor towards the wrong glory carriers must shift to real glory carriers because there are some pseudo glory carriers out there when you sow to them when you sow into them and you sow into their soil and you help them and you use your power and your means to 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 forward their agenda they are the ones that get rich and you are the one that becomes poor i'm not talking something that is not truth it has been happening Pseudo glory carriers are getting rich from your power and you are getting no honor from it. Tonight we mash down that lie. Enough is enough. You are delivered from tonight. You are shifted from tonight. My God, I feel the anointing of the Lord on my hands. You are shifted from tonight in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray, Lord, shift me. Come on, pray it. Lord, shift me. Lord, shift me. Lord, shift me. You see, here was the problem. Jacob was serving, but he was serving the wrong glory. Whose father are you serving? What spirit of fatherhood have you been serving? Are you serving your father or another man's father? Come on, work with me because you need to hear this. Your, your spiritual father is your spiritual progenitor. In other words, he is the DNA to which you connect. Because you came to Christ through someone, through someone's preaching or someone's teaching, it does not mean that that person is your father. Hmm. Some people are going to be angry with me tonight. 
But that's okay. Because you came to Christ because of somebody's preaching or because of somebody's teaching, it does not mean that that person is your spiritual father. Let's, let's fix some things in the realm of the spirit. Your father is God. Jesus said, call no man father. God in heaven is your father. Number one. So true spiritual fatherhood must come from God. Follow me. If God is your father, because you see, there are people who have been born again. Or let, let me not use the word born again, because if you are truly born again, it is the spirit of God that led you to Christ and draw you to the father. But there are some people who have come into Christianity, but they are not born again. And so they are not connected to the father in heaven. God connects you if you're truly born again. God connects you to a spiritual DNA, to a spiritual lineage that activates your destiny. If a spiritual father does not make your baby leap, he's not your father. Oh, Jesus, help me tonight. Help me tonight. Help me tonight, Holy Ghost. You see, you can have many teachers. You can have many counselors, but there are not many fathers. You see, your father will activate you. Help me, Jesus. When you hear the voice of your father, something in you will leap. Something in you will come alive. Your father will bring you alive to your destiny you might be sensing that there is something on your life and you might not know yet what it is you might be sensing that there is something about you that 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 that, that is that, that is unique about you but you 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 yet cannot connect to what it is when you hear your father's voice Something in you will come alive. Your destiny in Christ will leap at the sound of your spiritual father on the earth who is connected to your father who is in heaven. And so watch this, watch this. When you connect, you will feel the missing part of you come into place. Oh, Jesus, help me tonight. Your father activates. Your father equips. Your father imparts. Your father elevates. And watch this. Your father releases you. If what you are under is not doing this for you, then the man is not your father. Oh, Jesus. I'm fixing something in the spirit tonight because some of you have been aligned wrong. Some of you have been looking for uh, acceptance where you cannot find acceptance. True fathers do not imprison. True fathers release. Fathers produce. That's why they are progenitors. Fathers produce and fathers release. Mm -hmm. you cannot hear me saints of God because you see you must be a glory carrier and if you're going to be a glory carrier you must understand this whole concept of spiritual fatherhood you cannot make a man your father by serving him hear me you cannot make a man your father by serving him. Oh, Jesus. Blood of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Too many sons and daughters have been serving men hoping that their master will love them as sons. <laughs> you have been giving, sowing seeds, doing acts of kindness, doing deeds of kindness, hoping that by doing that, you will find acceptance in the heart of the man you are serving that you may become a daughter to the person you are serving. It will not work. It will not happen because you are not of their spiritual DNA. You are not of their spiritual heritage nor their lineage. Stop making yourself a slave in hope that you will become a son. Let me say it again. Stop making yourself a slave. With the hopes that you will become a son one day. <laughs> hey, my God, my God, my God. The road to sonship is not through slavery. The road to sonship is not through slavery. It is through your connection with the spirit of glory. When your father comes into your life, you will see clearly who you are, what you are, and what you should become. Because it is not your serving that produces your destiny. It is your father. Because it is your father that produced you. You cannot be of one kind and hope to be of another kind. You can't be a lion and then serve a cat. Or a puss in hopes that you will mature to be a lion wrong kind every animal was created after their kind and you see some of you you have a spiritual DNA you carry a spiritual sound a spiritual seed but you have been aligned to the wrong father and so your seed in you cannot produce anything. It can't mature you into what you are supposed to be because you are aligned wrong. Jesus, help me tonight. Fathers give identity while mothers give emotionality. You see, while fathers bring identity to your life mothers bring the emotional component watch this now follow me you see because this is why it was important that jacob called rachel and leah to his to to where he was now because the glory definition is coming up on his life and so rachel and leah had to come in alignment the mothers had to come in alignment because if the mothers did not come in alignment then the sons would be out of work fathers give definition you can quote me on what i'm saying fathers give definition but mothers give decoration you cannot decorate what has not been defined. Oh, Jesus. I know I've been talking to you long, but please bear with me. Because the Holy Ghost wants you to get this tonight. You cannot decorate what has not been defined. And what has been happening is that many of you have been seeking decoration, glory, because glory decorates you 
but you have not yet been defined. Your spiritual alignment has not come into place. Jesus, our Father, gave us definition. He brought us to alignment with the glory. And the Holy Spirit was sent to give us decoration. There is no accessing the glory without the Word and the Spirit. The blood of Jesus is the DNA through which all of this happens. If your Father in heaven has not defined you, the Holy Ghost cannot decorate you. And if God has not connected you to the right spiritual Father on earth, through which your spiritual identity can find definition, then decoration in your life will be a long time in coming. Instead of being a son, you will be a slave. You don't go looking for your father. Your father looks for you. God is the one who connects you to your father. The dark world. Let me, let me teach you something here. The dark world has an order in it. That says sons must look for their fathers. But in the kingdom of light, in the kingdom of our father, you see, fathers produce, they look for their sons, and they bring their sons into alignment. If you are not connected to the right spiritual DNA, you will be treated like a bastard. You will be treated like an outcast. You will be a misfit among the sons. Stop trying to be a misfit and connect to the right fit. Your father in the Lord. Let me say it again. Stop trying to be a misfit and connect to the right fit. Your father in the Lord. You have been looking for glory. But what has happened is that you are connected to the wrong glory. Jesus, help me tonight. Hallelujah. Let me close with verse number seven. The Bible says, And your father deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. God did not allow him to hurt me. You see, Jacob was deceived. Just like many of you have been deceived. Thinking that these men that you are under, they are your fathers. But they are not your fathers. They are not your fathers. Many of them, they are not your fathers. They have not given birth to you. They don't carry your spiritual sound. They don't carry your spiritual DNA. You don't carry what they carry. You don't carry, my God. You, you, you can't connect to the spirit that they carry. You're a misfit. Wrong fathers deride. They cheat. They deceive. They manipulate. And they mock those that are not their sons. If you are among sons that are not your brothers, by spiritual DNA, they will mock what you carry. Let me say it again. If you are among people, hear me, that don't carry your spiritual DNA, they will mock what you carry. Wrong fathers cannot produce the glory you need to define you. They will manipulate you and cage you instead of releasing you. Wrong fathers cannot produce the glory that you need to define you. The glory that is on your life, they will manipulate it and they will cage it. Because they don't want it to be released. 
Because if it is released, it will expose them. There has to be a shift from the cage to the chariot. Hear me, saints. There has to be a shift. If your glory is going to be revealed, if the glory of God on your life is going to be revealed, there has to be a shift. From the cage to the chariot. Cages lock you, confine you, imprison you, and de-glorify you. The chariot elevates you, gives you speed, empowers you, and gives you status. The glory, when it comes upon you, when it is free, when it is released upon you, will break anti-divine glory from your life. The hour has come. The time has come that everything that has caged you, locked up your spiritual destiny, everything that has caged your life from tonight, you are being freed from it. Every cage holding you, is going to break by the glory that is upon you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.